Hello. This time we are going to solve some uh, chemical kinetic problems. I will show you how to apply all these concepts and formulas we just learned. I will start doing a little review on the main formulas we are going to apply to solve the problems. Let's just start with the ray law. We have <clears throat> our generic equation A plus B making products What is the ray law for that reaction? So the ray law for the reaction will be rate equals rate constant times concentration of A times concentration of B. Elevated to exponents M and N for B. We learned that these exponents have nothing to do with the stoichiometric coefficients of the balanced chemical equation and also we learn that there, there's an exception to the rule when we are working with elementary steps. Since this is the right law <clears throat> for a overall reaction, overall reaction, then M and N are obtained experimentally. And also we know that M and N are called the orders of the reaction, and M plus N is the overall order of the reaction. Order of reaction. And this is the general ray law for that reaction. Also, we found another set of formulas to describe the kinetics of that reaction, and those are called integrated ray laws. So let's start with the zero order integrated ray law. For a zero order integrated ray law, it's important to remember the graph associated to the process. If you can recall, in a graph of concentration of A, 
against time it produces a straight line with negative slope and we learn that this slope m is negative rate constant. From here, we obtain a formula that will help us to solve our problems. So the formula we, we got in the previous period was concentration of A at time T equals negative KT plus concentration of A at time zero. You can find different shapes of this formula. When you play with this around, you move the terms around, you can have different uh, shapes of the formula and you apply the one that you like most or the one that adjusts better to solve your particular problem. Sometimes the problem is asking for final concentration, that means a time t, and they'll give you the time. Sometimes they give you this, and you need to find what was the initial concentration at time zero. Sometimes they give you all the information, and you need to find the equilibrium, sorry, the rate constant. This is, remember, this is a lower k, lower case k, which is the rate constant. For example, uh, you may see this formula also as concentration of A at time t equals negative kt plus initial concentration of A. So you move this around. And from here also we'll show you in the previous video that the half-life associated to this process will be half-life for a zero order kinetics will be initial concentration of A over two times the rate constant. So these two equations will help you, equation one and equation two. So keep in mind that you may need only one, or sometimes when we are talking about uh, decomposition and half-life, so you will need to use this. Usually, you have to use both, and I will show you how to do that process. If you don't remember what is uh, where or how we get this, I recommend go to the previous video. Um, I showed you there how to uh, obtain these formulas and the meaning of these uh, formulas. Also the definition of half-life. So this is our first set of equations we are going to use to solve problems. The second set
is the first order. First order kinetics. For the first order kinetics, let's start with the graph. The graph associated with that process. If you can recall that in a graph of natural log of A, natural log of concentration of A against time, we got also on a straight line with negative a slope. And that negative slope happens to be the rate constant. From, from here, we obtain a formula And one of the shapes of the formula is, uh, for example, probably the most common shape of this formula is natural log, natural log of A, at time t over concentration of A in issue. It is important that you uh, pay attention here because, let me rewrite this, uh, we got some adjustments here. This is natural log of that whole expression. So if you don't want to make mistakes, probably you want to put this in parentheses. Common mistake is just taking natural log of A and then dividing by uh, concentration on the bottom. This is natural log of the whole expression A a time t over a a time zero. And that is equals to negative kt Again, there are uh, many shapes for this same formula. You can find also very common to see the formula. Uh, we studied this already on the previous, on the previous video. This is also very useful concentration of A at time T equals concentration of A initial times E elevated to negative KT. Very useful, especially if you want to find con final concentration of a reactive A. Uh, remember our generic equation, A plus B to form product Here we are using concentration of A. You, you could use also concentration of B, just that probably it's easier to use just one letter so you don't get confused. So you can use B here. So you want to stay with the B. It doesn't matter, I just show the how the concentration of that particular reactive um, changes over the time. 
So in our words, uh, it shows the kinetics of that particular reactive when it's working to make products. All right, so what, what is the half-life of a first order kinetics? We learned also the half-life for the first order kinetics was natural log of two, I showed you that in the previous video, which is 0 0.693. That is the natural log of two over K, the rate constant. As you can see here, now we have two formulas, either this one and this one, this is the same, right? These two are the same. So we have two formulas for first order. Now we have equation one and two. It's important we have all these available because a lot of times we have to use both together to solve one problem. If the problem has a question about half-life, that could be half-life uh, on a chemical reaction or, or half-life for a decay, radioactive decay process, most of the times you will need to use both, both equations. Notice also that from this equation, the half-life depends only on the equilibrium, uh, the rate law. In other words, for a, for a first order kinetics, half life doesn't depend on the initial amount of reactive or radioactive material. It doesn't depend on the final concentration depends only on the value of the rate constant. Let's compare to the uh, half-life of the zero order. Notice that on the second order, second order process, the half-life depends not only on the rate constant, but also on the initial concentration. So you need to know what, it, what was the initial concentration and you need to know what is the rate constant to find what is the half-life of that zero order process. For a first order, the half-life depends only on the rate constant. All right, so our next set of equations is for a second order. Second order kinetics. Let's start with the graph. How does it look like? A graph for a second order process. Has to be a graph of one over concentration of A. Again, or concentration of B. over the time. How does it look, the graph? It's going to be a straight line with positive slope. And that slope 
is plus k. From here, we obtain a integrated relo that looks like one over concentration of A, a time T, a final, a time T, equals KT plus one over concentration of A in each. Again, you can play around with this. Um, you can solve for K if the problem is asking for K only. You can solve for T if the problem is asking for the time to go from here to there, from initial to final. Or you can find final concentration and the problem gives you everything else. Or the problem asks you what was the initial concentration and the problem will give you everything else. Half-life of second order kinetics is going to be one over k times initial concentration of A. As you can see, the half-life of second order kinetics depends or is function of initial, con initial concentration and the rate constant. All right, so we have all the formulas we will need to solve uh, some problems. So let's jump to one problem and I'll show you how to do the analysis, critical thinking, how to obtain your variables from the statement of the problem, how to choose the right equation, and how to solve it. I have this, I like this problem, this very interesting problem here. The problem says that the composition of a gas is second order. It takes 10 minutes for 70% of the gas to be decomposed when its initial concentration is 3.4 times 10 to the negative 2 moles per liter. Calculate the reaction rate. Okay, let's analyze the problem and write everything down. Are you ready? Do you have enough paper? To write. Remember, just watching is not enough. Uh, it's not going to work for you. You will learn nothing. Zero. This is a chemistry class. You need to write it down. So get a paper, get a pencil, get a pen, get the formula sheet next to you. I recommend you rewrite the formulas again on the paper, this one. Write it down again, put on a clean piece of paper and have it next to you. Your calculator also have it next to you. Don't forget to close the door of your room, put the label, do not disturb. Now, are you ready? All right, let's do it. Let's read the problem again. 
that the composition of a gas is second order. Wow, that is huge information there. Second order. If we have a reaction A plus B to form product. Products. The rate law for this reaction is what? Start here with rate constant times concentration of A, and what is this exponent here? It's two. That's what the problem is telling you. The reaction goes through a second order kinetics. And that's it, that's how you write that rate law for that reaction. If you want to analyze more about this, you can say, well, if that reaction is second order with respect to A only, that means it is zero order with respect to B. That's why concentration of B doesn't show here, because it has to be a zero order with respect to B. I'm, doing, I'm, going, I'm going to do the whole analysis. I'm going to spend my time here. So to show you all possibilities how you do the analysis, the critical thinking when you have the problem. Go through this problem, you can repeat it many, many times until it starts to click in your brain. Of course, when you're solving problems and you are uh, on the time, you will need you will need to do this uh, whole analysis. Just go straight to the answers. But it's my obligation as an instructor to show you all the possibilities because a different problem can have a different analysis. So I want, I'll try to cover all possible analysis here using this problem. I like this problem. It's beautiful. All right. So that's the first information given on the problem. Or you want to write it different? No, you can write it with respect to V, right? You can say the rate of that reaction equals K over concentration of B, sorry, times concentration of B to the second power, the second order with respect to that reactive. And that's the gas that mentioning here. So either one, again, you can use A or B. If you use this one, that means the concentration of A is zero order. Same analysis as we did here. All right, let's stick with A, letter A. First information, first piece of information given. So we know that. Now, it says it takes 30 minutes for 70% of the gas to be decomposed. Ooh. When the initial concentration is 3.4 times 10 to negative two moles per liter, molar. Let's start with initial concentration. So initial concentration, Initial concentration of A is 3.4 times 10 to negative 2 molar or moles per liter. Less is molar, the symbol. So it says it takes 30 minutes. That means the reaction starts to work and it will take some time to go to a final concentration of A. 
or concentration of A at time T. How long does it take on the problem? It took, it says here, 30 minutes. So that's time, 30 minutes. Don't forget to write units, always write units. units. So it, the reaction took 30 minutes to go from here to there. So what happened with the initial concentration? So it says the problem takes 30 minutes for 70% of the gas to decompose. So that means after 30 minutes, the concentration at that time, at time T, will be 70% of the initial amount. That's the amount decomposed. So the new concentration will be 0 0.70 of the initial. And it took the time to get the value. If we plug this in the calculator, so we have 70% of the initial is 0.70 times 3.4 times 10 to negative 2. Uh, what did you get? I'm waiting for you. Your calculator. Batteries die, so stop the recording, put the new batteries, and come back. I got zero point. 0 0.238 molar. All right, so now we have initial concentration and we have final concentration. Also, we have time to get there. Another different type of problem will ask you, what is the fraction remaining of A after the same time with the same decomposition, 70%? What is the, what is the meaning of fraction remaining? Fraction remaining means what portion of the initial amount didn't react? This amount, React. Was this what well, was decomposed? So the fraction remaining, the, the fraction that didn't react, is the the other thirty percent, right? So it's going to be this one minus this one, or this one times thirty percent times point three. All right. We have problems. Uh, including that later. All right, so we need another formula. We need a formula to find the reaction rate. They're asking for this. Reaction rate. Oh, sorry, this, this one, reaction rate. This is a noun. We don't know this, that's the question. What about this? Do we know the reaction constant? The rate constant? No. 
Do we know concentration of A? Yes. Can we find this? Yes. How? Can you use this formula? No. Because this formula has two unknowns. This one and this one. So that means in math, there's a rule that says if you have two unknowns, variables, that means you need two equations to solve to find the unknowns. So this is our first equation, we need a second equation. What equation will you use? You will use integrated second order, of course. Integrated ray law. So to grab your Cheat, cheat to find what is the formula for a second order kinetics. And you found the formula one. Our concentration of t at time, our concentration of a at time t equals. So let's let's put it uh, the other one that will be easier to apply. You can recall from the pre previous slide. Let's use this better. Remember, we have different shapes, and you use the one that suits, be suits better the, the problem. Minus 1 over concentration of A initial equals KT. We know this, we know this, we know this. We, we don't know this, so we can solve for this. So we are going to use this formula only to find what is the rate constant. So let's do it. Let's plug in the information we just found into this equation to find the rate constant. Once we find the rate constant, we can plug that into this first equation. So we have two equations, equation one and equation two. I put it here for you. So use Equation two to solve for rate constant. Or to find rate constant. So let's do that. So we're using this one, one over concentration of T, concentration of A at time T, which is this one. One over zero point 
zero. Zero point zero two three eight. Minus one over initial concentration. Which is this three point four times ten to negative two, and this is smaller, and this is smaller. Equals K and that's the one we, we want to find times the time for that process to go from here to here and that is 30 minutes. All right, so let's let's do it. How much is one over zero point zero point two three eight? Let me do it here. So I have one divided by zero point zero two three eight, and I got. 42, this is 42 point zero two. Oh, well, we're using only uh, two significant figures. So that's it, 42. Uh, units. Remember, this is one over m, so it's going to be molar negative one minus one over. This is the next one. One divided by zero point zero three four. That's three point four times ten to negative two. And I got 29.4. Oops, two significant figures. All right, let's stick with number of significant figures there. Although, we can leave it there and, and, and then uh, we try not to do uh, significant figures during the process. We carry uh, significant figures only on the final answer to prevent carrying on errors. Uh, I already did it. More or negative one. Yes, because it's one over m. And you can put 29 over molar. It's easier you write it molar negative one. And that matches the units of this on this subtraction. Equals, how much is this? So you do 42 minus 29 plus 13. 13 molar negative one equals k times 30 minutes. We solve for k. So k from here equals 13 
molar negative 1 divided by 30 minutes. And that will be 13 divided by 30 is 0 0.5. Zero point four three units. Units of the constant again are necessary. So we need to write it. It's going to be molar negative one minutes negative one. We just found the value of K. All right, so we are getting close. Do you remember why we're taking this uh, value? Why we were trying to find this value? Okay, because we want to plug that into this formula. Now let's, let's write it down. Let's put it here. Says plug K, we just found that one into equation one to find the rate. All right, so rate. equals the constant, now we, we know the constant, 0 0.43 molar negative one, minutes negative one, time is con initial concentration of A, uh, which is 3.4, no, I can use, since I'm going to use numbers, uh, I can use the regular brackets. This is regular bracket now, because I'm going to write numbers. Uh, 3.4 times 10, 10 to the negative 2 a square. So his second order. And this is what molar, right? So this number square will give you, let's do it by parts. So it's going to be, I'm going to do it step by step. 0 0.43 molars negative one, minutes negative one, times, how much is this, a square? So you say, if you write that, you want to use the scientific notation, that it has to be 3.4 exponent negative two EE, -E, I'm using the EE -E in the scientific calculator. Some calculators say exponent, and some calculators uses the second function. So you need to know your calculator. Your own, every calculator can have different ways to do it. So I say equals, which is 0 0.034, and then I hit the square button, square. And I got, 0 
zero zero one one five six. I'm using all numbers given by the calculator, so we don't introduce errors there. I will do significant figures at the end. All right. Units. It's going to be molar square, right? Molar. Don't forget to follow up the units. And let me calculation. And then we multiply this number by this. So that number times the constant, which is 0 0.43. I should have written more numbers for the constant. To reduce the error. All right. It's going to be, and I, I want to run that off. It's going to be five. It's, I have four point ninety seven times ten to the here is one, two, three, four, negative four. And units. So notice that we have molar square here and molar negative one. So that cancels out, leaving only molar on top minus negative one. That, that means moles per minute. Negative one. So we can run that off here because we have two significant figures in the initial concentration. So we should run that off to 5.0 times 10 to the negative 4. And you can write it moles per minute or moles neg negative, moles minute negative 1, either one. The same. And that makes sense because now we have units of rate, molars per minute. I recommend when you're solving the problems, remember it on, on, during the test. Since it's going to be online, you need to write this on a piece of paper. Your calculations, you write your calculations on a piece of paper during the test. Um, once you finish the test, right away, send me your calculations papers through an email to, to my email. You can take the pictures of your calculations. You can convert that into uh, Word document or PDF. Or just take a picture and send, send me the pictures <clears throat> or documents or your calculations for the test right away it's right away and on your on your answers don't forget to circle or square put on a box final answer and you write here answer so i know out of the all these numbers out of your calculations you know this is your answer for the rate. That's how we analyze the problem. We do, we do critical thinking. We write the formulas, we find the announce, and we solve the problem. Let me show you another problem. Check this out. Second problem. This is a classic problem you may see. And this one says mononitrogen.
oxide reacts with bromine gas at elevated temperatures according to the equation. Do you know gas reacts with Br2 gas to form 2NOBr? So the problem says the gas reacts with bromine at elevated temperatures following this stoichiometry. Two moles of NO reacts with Br2 to form two moles of NOBr. In a certain reaction mixture, the rate of the formation of NOBr gas was found to be 4.50 times 10 to negative 4 moles liters negative 1 second negative 1. The question is, what is the rate of consumption of Br2 gas also in moles per uh, second? molarity per second, moles, liters, negative one, seconds, negative one. I give you a hint here, this is the answer. All right, let's approach this uh, problem. Remember when we were making relationships between the reaction rates and the stoichiometry, we said that uh, in this case, we are going to relate this one, this reactive, with this reactive with, uh, we have Br2, this one these two will be related in, the, in our problem. So it is important you read the whole problem to know exactly what species will be used during the problem. Notice that here, the problem is not mentioning this. It's part of the reaction, but problem doesn't mention this. So that means we don't have to worry about that. It's mentioning only these two species here. In general, as a review, I'm going to do this. Since this is being consumed and this is being formed, the reaction is going in that direction. It's being consumed, so the rate is going to be lower and lower, it's going down. So it's going to be negative change of concentration of Br2 equals and this is being formed, so it's going to be positive. One over two, this is the stoichiometric coefficient, times concentration of NO here. This is the relationship between the rate of disappearance and the rate of formation in the reaction, and the relationship with the stoichiometry on the problem. Uh, if you don't remember how to do this, go back to one of the first videos on chemical kinetics. All right, so let's start. 
The question is, what is the rate of consumption of BR2? So we want to know the rate of BR2. Change of concentration of BR2 over the time. That's the rate. Equals. What is given? The concentration the rate. The rate of this rate of formation of this is given. And that's the one we have here. So we write that one. It's going to be four point fifty times ten to the negative four moles per liter per second. So that is molarity, seconds negative one. It's the same. Times. So what is the stoichiometric ratio of consumption and production? So you say, We want to cancel, and this is, uh, I, I forgot to write, what is that? What is that? This is rate of formation of NO, very important. We know Uh, what species we're talking about. So this is NO, PR. Now we can use the conversion factor using the stoichiometry. So the stoichiometry is telling you that every time one mole, one molar per, one molar of this per second is being consumed two moles of this per liter per second is being produced. So that's the ratio, one to two. And we write, okay, so every time two molar per second is being produced of NOBR, one molar per second, one molar per second of BR2 is being consumed. And that's it. So notice that this unit cancels this unit here, leaving molar per second of BR. When you do that, that's half of that. So a lot of times in the problems, you don't, you don't need to do the actual calculation. Just do, take a look at the numbers and try to do it down on your head. It's going to be easier. Um, and you look the uh, options you have on the test, then it will be easy because we have 4.50 times 10 to negative four, <clears throat> half of that, <coughs> sorry, uh, is 2.25 times 10 to negative four models per second. And that's it. Let's do one more. And here is the, this one. I like this one too. It says, <clears throat> it has been 
experimentally determined that the rate law for the reaction between mercury two chloride and sodium oxalate is third order overall and first order with respect to the chloride. Write the ray law for this equation. Very nice problem. On this one, you need to show what you know about ray laws. <clears throat> so we have a balanced chemical equation, and we need to write the ray law. for the reaction using the information given and that information was obtained experimentally. That's values, piece of information that makes sense. And we were mentioning this in the previous video. All right, so we know the shape but that ray law for that reaction is constant. <clears throat> the problem is not giving you the value for the constant and it's not giving you information to find constant. It's not, it's not required. You just need to write the shape, the general shape of that ray law. So let's leave it just simply as um, K for the rate uh, constant times concentration of mercury two chloride Elevated to an exponent, and I'll do the analysis. Let, let me write, finish the general shape. Time is concentration of the second component there, which is sodium oxalate, Na2, C2O4. That is the oxalate. And we know those are elevated to the orders that's given that's given on the problem let's use this one <clears throat> so the problem says uh is third order overall so that means when we add the exponents here, M and N is the order. Overall. <clears throat> and it's first order with respect to the chloride. So it's first order with respect to the chloride. is third order overall. Therefore, what order is this? Well, it has to be two. <coughs> Sorry. Right? Because the sum of the individual partial orders equals the overall order of the reaction. This is given. Um, we conclude that the order for oxalate is two, is second order. There is first order with respect to the chloride and it's second order with respect to the oxalate. Done. Let's do one more. <clears throat> Let's do this one. I love this type of problems here are really interesting. 
<coughs> Sorry. I apologize for the background sound. All right. So with this, we have this reaction. This is a generic reaction. And we know the shape for that reaction equals rate constant times concentration of A to the order M times concentration of uh, B, in this case it should be B, times uh, to the elevated to the order N. We have experimental concentration rate data for five experiments here. The question is, what is the rate law for that reaction? And what is the rate constant for the reaction? So let's do the first part. What is the <clears throat> rate law for the reaction? Let's clarify here. We have to uh, make some changes here. This is supposed to be concentration of B. Make these changes on your paper too, because it cannot be M because M is not part of the reactives. It's typo problem. Same thing, I believe I have typo problem here. Uh, when I name it, the first uh, compound here. <coughs> nitrogen monoxide. <coughs> you should not say mononitrogen. I just realized. All right, so we have some type of problems here. And we are here to solve that. Let's do the first one. What is the ray law for the reaction? Again, uh, we know the general shape has to be some, something like this, All right? So that part, we know. rate equals constant times concentration of A to the exponent M times concentration of B to the exponent N. We know this, why they are asking? What, what exactly are they asking? What is the rate look <coughs> for the reaction? Well, that means we have to find M N and the constant to write a complete ray law for the reaction. And we can obtain M and N from this experimental data. All right, let's do the analysis. Pay attention here. <clears throat> let's use uh, the red one. Okay, let's start to find M. In order to find the value of, of this exponent here, which is the order of the reaction with reaction respect to A, we need to keep this concentration constant. So let's find here where Concentration of A is changing and where concentration of B is constant, is kept constant. This column shows concentration of A, this column shows concentration of B, and this is the initial rate column. Concentration of A here is changing one, two, three, and then it stays constant. Second column, concentration of B stays constant and then changes. So let's select the first three experiments to calculate the value of M. So we're going to use this, the blue one, to calculate M. <clears throat> How much? All right, let's do it. What do we do? We keep this constant 
and we're going to change only the concentration of A. First change, we double the concentration of A and let's see what happened with the concentration uh, with the rate. What happened here? Doubles too. So that means from here, you duplicate the concentration and notice that here also the concentration duplicates <clears throat> double. Right away, we know this is first order. First order. I got a little bit of allergy. All right, just to make confirmation, let's do one more. On the third experiment, we triple the concentration of A, this is 3x. Let's check what happened with this, with the, with the rate, with the speed of the reaction from 0.2 went up to 0.60 faster. So it's three times faster. You triple here, the rate triple. You triple the concentration, the rate triples. Confirmation, it's first order. <clears throat> All right, we just find M. Let's find N. In order to find N, the order of the reaction with respect to V we need to keep concentration of A constant and make changes on the concentration of B only. Let me use different colors so we can distinguish which one is, let's put this is N, we are going to find N. So remember, we are going to keep concentrations of A constant. And you know what, I want to, Erase, since you already took note of that, I want to erase here so you don't get confused. And this is easy because you have the video, you can play it back to see what was the previous number. All right. Now let's find. We are going to keep concentration of A constant, which is this set of experiments. <clears throat> no, it's not picking, picking up the color. Yeah. Okay, now. This set, on this set of experiments, experiments three, four, and five, we kept concentration of A constant, and now we are changing concentration of B, and let's see what happens with, with, the, with the rate. So we are going to use these three equations to find the value of N. <coughs> Sorry again. Let's do the first one. Here, <clears throat> we double the concentration of B. What happened with the, with, the, with the rate? It went up how many times? Four times, right? 0. 0.60 times four is 2.40. So you double the concentration of B, the speeds quadruple. Right away, you know, this is second order. <clears throat> Just to make a, a, a confirmation, let's triple. Let's triple the concentration of B. So that's 3x. 
look from point 10 to point 3, concentration went up three times. Let's analyze what happened with the speed. It went up how many times? From point 0.60 to point 0.40. It's easy, right? It's 5.40 divided by point 0.6. How many times? 9x. Which is 3x squared, <clears throat> right? 3x squared x times. That's confirmation that is second order. All right, so we can rewrite the rate, and now we know the rate equals the constant times concentration of A, which is uh, M is one to the first power times concentration of B, which is second order. The second part, he says, what is the rate constant for the reaction? Now we know, we know the rates, we know the concentration, we know the orders, we can just solve for K. <clears throat> so K equals the rate, solving for K, we bring this down here, concentration of A times concentration of B square. So the rate will be, and you choose any of those. You have five concentrations, you have five rates here. Which one you want to choose? What experiment? The first, second, the fifth experiment to put here? <clears throat> I don't know you, but I'm going to choose the number one experiment. I like experiment number one but because it's giving me very simple numbers and it's easy to make a calculation. I could choose point 30. If I was so bored, I will choose five so I can do, you know, I can enjoy myself doing the calculation. I'm going to choose this one. Data from experiment number one. So it says the rate in experiment number one is 0.20. <clears throat> uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do in two steps. One, the first step, I do uh, only the numbers. And on the second part, I will do only units. So uh, the rate is 0.20 over concentration of A. And experiment number one is point, point 0.10 times concentration of B square. Concentration of B in experiment number one is point 0.10 square. <clears throat> and that is point twenty over point 10 cube, right? So we do that operation. It's going to be <clears throat> point 10 square times Point ten, which is point zero zero one. <clears throat> point zero zero one. And when you do this, you get 
120 divided by 0 0.001. 200. Makes sense. Two hundred no, units. Let's work units. I like to work units independent. So the units of rate here is molarity. <clears throat> This is molar, I like to work molarity. This is moles per liter, which is molarity, right? Which is molarity per second, right? That's the units of rate, molarity per second, which is molarity seconds negative one. And that's what we have here. <clears throat> so molarity seconds negative one. On the bottom, we have concentration of A, which is molarity, moles per liter, times concentration of B square, which is going to be molarity square. So we have to simplify. Molarity square and molarity on top. Oh, you can cancel this too, notice. Uh, can cancel any any different way. Uh, you can cancel this. You can cancel this. So this cancels this one, and that leaves you molarity negative two seconds negative one. Now we can write. The rail, the rate, which is two hundred molarity negative two seconds negative one. Sounds crazy, right? These units. Don't worry about the meaning. They are just there because they will. Once you plug that into here, they will help to cancel out these units here that comes from here and you will get always units of rate which is molarity seconds is this the final answer no we need to write down the answer yes we we find everything for the answer but we haven't written the answer so let's write the answer here let me give more room here all right, so let's write the answer here. The final answer. So the rate, law for that reaction is K, which is 200, molar seconds negative one times concentration of A to the first order times concentration of B to the second order. Circle your answer. Answer. That's it. That's how you solve that type of problem. I'll show you a couple more.